please subscribe, please hit like, please share, and please comment. I love the comments. Today we've got this old dude over here who's a watchmaker trying to teach this young dude over here how to make watches. Make watches, fix watches, repair watches, whatever you want to call it. A watchmaker is considered somebody that actually can do uh, complex repairs on watches. So it's not just making a watch, it's someone that actually can repair and service a watch. That's a watchmaker. So today I've got a video I want to make that's uh, it has to do with shellac. So the whole thing has to do with impulse jewels being loose and I went down a bit of a rat hole on this one here trying to figure out how do I put that impulse jewel back on the roller table the easiest way. So I'm going to review this and other things. So first of all a couple shout outs. One is for watch repair tutorials tutorials.com. Say that three times fast. So watch repair tutorials.com and that gentleman has an excellent channel on YouTube and he also has uh, a channel on the internet watch repair tutorials.com and he is a expert watchmaker so check him out please. The next shout out is to watch with Mike. So Mike's been repairing watches for a little bit over a year now but had a very good channel on automotive uh, automobiles vintage cars and stuff like that so Mike's a friend and he's a very good uh, watchmaker as he's learning and he's picking up things extremely fast and he provides very high-end very well produced uh, videos on watchmaking so check out Mike's channel and that's called watch with Mike the next one is I shoot watches with Dayton and Dayton started his channel with his first watch and actually started recording uh, on his first adventure on how to repair watches which is very adventurous so so Dayton's a pretty cool guy he lives in Switzerland and he and he repairs watches as well and check out his his channel called I shoot watches I'm almost at the end here and then there's Sonny Morehouse Sonny Morehouse does have a channel and it's called Sonny Morehouse so look him look him up he's a really cool dude very smart gentleman he also does watch repair and I think he's getting his son into it as well which is really cool so check out Sonny's uh, page and he's part of the group of chats that are folks that we're gonna have chats with and Sonny's a pretty good guy and he's supported my channel for many years He's got lots of great advice some of the things that I'm gonna do today are based on what Sonny has told me and the last channel is CS Spinner watch restoration so it's Chris Spinner is an exceptional watchmaker and provides exceptional quality videos on watch restorations and watches of all types so check out his channel he has picked up the skill within two or three years and he's got to my level quite quickly is an exceptional watchmaker so check out Chris he's got uh, the same tools I have with the exception of one he just got a topping tool and he won't see his family for a year all right it all started here I was looking down a little bit so hopefully you're not going to get annoyed at me but it all started here with this old vintage watch Waltham pocket watch that's all folks yeah starting to sound like porky pig more and more these days so in this vintage pocket watch it's got a roller table with an impulse jewel that is loose so that impulse jewel is has just dropped right down as you can see I hope you can see that impulse jewel just hanging down and so I have to shellac that impulse jewel back into place. Now normally what I would do to get that impulse jewel back in is I would remove the roller table from this watch. I take out the hairspring first, remove the roller table, and then heat it up, remove the impulse jewel, and then I would take the roller table with a special tool I have and I would hold that roller table while the, it's getting heated up by a candle, a spirit lamp, and then I would remove the impulse the old impulse jewel clean it up with some alcohol um, isotropyl alcohol and isopropyl alcohol gotta say it right eh? isopropyl alcohol and then let it dry off and then I would I would shellac uh, with a very small flake of shellac heat that up and get the jewel back in place so so I was talking to Sonny as I mentioned earlier uh, a colleague of mine of watchmaking and Sonny said why don't you use liquid shellac. I'm like, well, liquid shellac? Where is that? And you know what? Liquid shellac is not in any books I have. I've, I've looked this up. I've been doing this for years. I've never seen anything called liquid shellac. So let's go to the liquid shellac creation table right now. So as you can see, I'm all hands and mice. Hands and mice. So 
the first thing you need is a big bag of shellac. So these are shellac flakes, got them off Amazon. Uh, I don't know if these shellac flakes is made in China, so I'm not sure how good this shellac is, so we're gonna have to do some shellac testing. Um, usually this shellac is made for for uh, for wood wood finishing. I remember when I was a kid and they made us make the uh, the corner wall mounted stand that was a deer, and then we spent time painting that deer and shellacking it so it would look uh, looked like it had gl glass on it. So you need a bag of shellac. I had shellac before, but the small bag of flakes that I use for putting uh, impulse jewels on, as I said before, and I've made videos online. You can watch my videos on how to actually do an impulse jewel, right, or put an impulse jewel on onto a roller table. Then you need, in my past way of doing it, what I did was I used a spirit lamp, and my spirit lamp, I would heat that up. It's called a spirit lamp. I think it has to do with Houdini and Houdini's mom and stuff. The big problem I had with this this particular spirit lamp, and I'll show you, is that the spirit lamp wick is really not working that well. It's kind of a spirit lamp dead wick. And it's not John Wick. Oh my God, that is bad. So I'm going to pull that wick out. So I'm going to pull out the wick. That's kind of what the wick looked like. Now I got a replacement wick, but I think it's too fat. So what I did was I went online and I think these are not quarter inch wicks and I bought a bunch of the I thought they were quarter inch wicks made in China but I don't look at these things so I got a whole bag of wicks so if anybody wants wicks let me know it's only like 11 bucks for the bag and the, the idea here was I was going to re-wick this lamp um, the problem I might have is if this wick is too wicky uh, I might not be able to put it in there so I'm going to tr try re-wicking it right now right now Jerry so just let me grab this other dissolved wick and John Wick Jr. so this is John Wick 4 I think so so let me just cut the end off this wick and see if I can get it a little bit less fuzzy on the end if I cut the end off so I get rid of the fuzziness of the wick now I've got to put this wick into the into this little hole so enter the wick into the hole and I don't know whether the wick will fit into this hole or this is too big a wick. Because if it's too big a wick, I'm screwed. So I'm just entering the wick into the hole here, as you can see. This is like an episode of Mr. Dress Up. So back in Canada, uh, we had a show called Mr. Dress Up. And, and it was Dress Up and Casey and Finnegan. And as the story goes, and I read, I watched this on, I think, Netflix. They had a show on Mr. Dress Up. And as the story goes, Mr. Dress Up actually came from the U.S. So he was Mr. U.S. Dress Up. And he was a friend of Mr. Rogers. So all those guys had the same first name, right? Mr. So Mr. Dress Up and Mr. Rogers were buddies. And Mr. Dress Up was working on Mr. Rogers' TV show uh, down in, I, I'm going to guess here, but... I'm thinking uh, it was near New York. Anyway, so he was working on his TV show, uh, and Mr. Rogers' TV show was gaining popularity, as they say, right? So, so he was he was uh, they were laying people off. So what they did was they they laid him off. He's like, what am I going to do? And they were saying, well, the Canadian broadcasting station up here in Canada has an opening for a kids show. Would you like to go and work on it? So he went up there with Mr. Rogers actually to start this kids show. So Mr. Rogers had a kids show up in Canada and Mr. Dress Up was basically on the show. And then Mr. Rogers wanted to go return back to his home. And I'm having a hell of a time putting this wick in by the way. And because of that, uh, the there was an opening. And so Mr. Dress Up said, hey, I think that I'll, uh, I will stay and I'll work on this show with you, right? And, or take it over. And so he took over the show and it became one of the most popular kids shows ever. It's just as equal in popularity uh, in Canada as Mr. Rogers was in the U.S. And, and it wasn't Mr. Dress Up's Neighborhood either. So this thing seems to be too friggin' thick or something, right? 
So maybe if I feed it through the top, let me just pull this thing out again, because it's all ratty now. If I feed it through the top and then twist it, I need to get to the, be the wheel. There's a wheel down the bottom there, as you can see, and that wheel will grab the wick and then pull it in. So if this is this wick is the right size, if I'm lucky, and I can spin this wick down to the bottom, then I just need to have enough wick left over to hit the material when it gets to that part of the uh, wick installation. So I worked so hard at getting this wick in. I tried, I tried, I twisted, I turned a little knobby on the top or the side, I twisted that, I tried I even licked the end of the wick and tried again. Um, <clears throat> I think this wick was too big. I recut it, tried getting it in from the other side, uh, thought I had a grip on it, said no, it decided not to grip. So <clears throat> eventually I just gave up on the wick and said, okay, that's enough. I've had enough of this wick stuff. That's it. So while I'm waiting for the shellac to melt, and hopefully it it ends up melting. What I'm going to do is take, just to test this shellac here, I'm going to take a little piece of shellac out and I have a table here that's used for resetting. Um, there we go. I have a table that's used here and it's used for, let me just get that out of the way, it's used for resetting pallet fork stones so I think I can just use this table as a heating table and heat that up um, until this shellac turns into a ball. So I can break this off as well and just make double it up or triple it up so it's not so thick. And usually these shellac flakes will just snap. There we go. So they break like that. I don't want to put too much shellac close to the end here where I actually could use this for fixing a pallet fork. So I don't want to. It's for actually resetting the jewels on a pallet fork. So I'll just leave it right there. And I would normally heat this up with a spirit lamp, but I have no time for that. So what I'm going to use is my spirit burrs nomadic whatever. So <laughs> this is, I got to make sure I, when I heat this up, I hold it over here out of the way of everything. So I'll move my camera around maybe, but, but I don't want to hold it uh, in front of my computer or any other place because I know that this could cause terrible a terrible problem so there's most of me right there so I'm gonna just hold this in the air uh, I've got a tablet right in front of me that's a very nice Amazon tablet and I just will hold it up like that and then heat it like this and then see if it balls up on me so it's so all I want it to do is ball up right so pull the trigger down like that and then press the button and I just need to alright done so that created a very small little ball and I don't think I melted any computer screens here but if you can see that it's a small little ball so what I'm going to do is see how long it takes for that ball to harden so let me just move my camera a little closer alright that's the ball right there so it should still kind of be soft maybe it isn't so that that hardened up quite quickly I'm working on right now this once it becomes complete shellac and look it's starting to get look at that it's starting to turn into more of liquid shellac I may have to turn I may have to put some more shellac in here because I want it to be gummy right you guys will have to tell me whether that's too liquidy right but it's starting to melt, which is nice. <clears throat> and I did the test here, and the shellac does turn into a ball. Um, but what I wanted to do is find something that I can use here. Just hang on. I'll be back. And I could have that other watch fixed today if it wasn't for the liquid shellac problem. So there we go. I'm just going to do it like that. There's that ball of shellac from before and let me move this out of the way and I'm going to just get this stuff out of the way and <clears throat> everything is kind of out of the way and I'm going to heat this up again um, and sure I'll let you see me heat it up what the hell <laughs> watch the guy blow up his blow up his house
Now it's still a ball. Had about three seconds to shape this thing and now it's already hard. So that's it's probably good shellac but but I don't like the speed it hardens because uh, that might be an issue. So anyway that's enough of it's enough experimenting for now. I'll just take this tool and put it aside and we'll check out the condition of the shellac. It's looking muddier and muddier. And now I'm going to stir it a bit and then go for lunch and see if I can if it's even dissolved even more by the time I get back from lunch, right? Cuz it might be a paste by then. And then I'm not sure again. I'm going to take a little drip of that and put it on a piece of paper and see how long it takes for it to solidify. And I might apply a little bit of heat to it too. So I'll see you after lunch, folks. All right, there's the consistency of my liquid shellac. I just threw in a whole bunch more. I watched a video on some guy that's making shellac to glue saxophone parts or whatever. He said, do that, leave it overnight, and in the morning, have a look at it. He said, if it gets, if it's too liquidy, he said, leave the jar, the uh, jar open and obviously the alcohol will evaporate out of that so I'm gonna leave that overnight and that's it and that's all I'm gonna do for this video today I'm not gonna repair the watch today I'm just prepping the liquid shellac so I can do stage two of this wonderful journey I have thanks a lot Sonny for the hint or the comment you made I need to clean up that balance and uh, get it all prepped to be liquid shellac let's see what happens I do still want to do a test on this so tomorrow when it's in the right consistency I think I might want to just test it and see how fast it how long it takes for it to harden and blah 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 right we'll see someone told me that once you put the liquid shellac on the part and then what you do is um, you take a light bulb and you use the edge of a or you use the heat from a light bulb to, to heat it up a bit and just move this stuff down into the liquid here it's not easy to work with though but we'll see you want a consistency that's kind of gummy that you bring it out and it's kind of gummy right I think that's what you want you guys can comment and let me know this is liquid shellac I'm getting shellacked usually when you're a shellac that was when someone punched you in a fight and you and you lost because you were shellacked <laughs> anyway thanks a lot thanks for watching my channel thanks for watching my videos please subscribe and we'll see what happens next with this great liquid shellac adventure shellac Jack Shack shellac I think was his name